desperate signals that turn guys off. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you might unintentionally be pushing guys away and turning them off. It's Sabrina, your personal love advisor from A New Mode, the channel where we show you how love actually works. I'm sure you have the best intentions, but as they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. No one ever wants to be the desperate girl, and you might not even realize that your actions are coming across as desperate. But if you are in that needy place internally, that is what's gonna happen. It's gonna come across through your actions, the guy is gonna pick up on it, and then all of a sudden he's just gonna be turned off and have no desire to see you anymore. You may not even realize that your actions are coming across as desperate. So that's why I'm gonna set the record straight in this video. I'm gonna be brutally honest because I really think that it's gonna help you out in the end. So make sure you watch this video all the way through. Real quick, if you like this video and find it helpful, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel for more relationship advice, leave a comment letting me know what you think, letting me know if you have any questions, I read them all, I try to answer everyone, and let's get started. First, I wanna say that I know this video title and this video topic may seem a little harsh, and my intention isn't to make you feel bad, my intention isn't to blame you or shame you, really my intention is to help you. Because personally, when I was single and dating, at least when I got a little older, not in my younger years, I never went to my girlfriends for relationship advice, never. Because what would my girlfriends do? They would just placate me and prop me up and stroke my ego. You're too good for him, you could do so much better. Oh, you're gonna find someone new, you're great, you didn't do anything wrong, he's a jerk, he's this, he's that. And their advice never helped me. Do you know who helped me? My guy friends, because they were honest and they were real. And sometimes it was a little brutal to hear, but they were right. And when I started talking to my guy friends about my relationship issues or when I needed advice, that's what helped me. That's what really caused me to look at my behavior because they weren't trying to spare my feelings. They were just being honest. And honestly, it's through that that I decided to start a site like a new mode. I was like, this is what the world needs. Women need honest advice and they need to understand men through the perspective of men themselves, not through a woman who's just trying to prop them up. Now, if you're wondering, well, you're a woman and you're giving us advice, it's because everything I know came from the men. This is not coming from my own brain. This is coming from years and years and years of interviewing men, researching men, talking to men, hearing their experiences. So that is what I spent years and years doing and now I share all my wisdom with you. And for those who don't know, my partner on A New Mode is a man, Eric Charles. He writes tons of articles on the site so you can check him out on there. Maybe one day we'll get him to make an appearance on this channel. So that's how I know what I know for those of you who don't know me. Okay, now let's get into it and talk about the desperate signals that turn men off. Number one, talking endlessly. When you talk and talk and talk and talk, it just comes across like you have something to prove. Like you're trying to prove yourself to him. And maybe you are because you like him and you wanna show him that that you're funny and that you're smart and that you're a good friend and that you have such a great life. So how else is he gonna know all these things unless you tell him? So you gotta talk and talk and talk and talk. And when he says something, you're just thinking about, oh, what can I say to respond to this so that I'll sound witty and I'll sound engaging and I'll sound interesting. You're not even listening to him. You're just talking yourself up. And if this is your problem, then I feel for you because this was my problem. I would just talk and talk and talk and talk because I would just like put on this whole show just to show how amazing I am. It's not appealing to show how amazing you are in that way because there's this quote, it's, a rich man doesn't need to tell you that he's rich. You just kind of know by the way he carries himself, by the way he presents himself. An amazing woman doesn't need to tell you how amazing she is. She knows that she's amazing and that just comes across. So don't prove yourself to him and don't try to just, you know, show him every single aspect of yourself right away. Let him discover that slowly. That's what how attraction builds. It builds slowly. Another thing with the talking and talking and talking is it comes across as braggy, it comes across as arrogant, and worst of all, you come across as a drama queen. The number one thing a man wants in a woman is a woman who is easy to be around. And if you are someone who just can't shut up, like that is just not easy to be around. That's exhausting to be around, that's tiring. It, he'll feel like this woman is just not gonna give me a minute of peace. And maybe that's not your authentic self. You aren't a dramatic, exhausting person. That's definitely not my authentic self, but that's how you're presenting yourself if you are just a talk, 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 talk. Like if you are just talking, 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 talking. So just be mindful of how much you're saying. And when you're with him, don't just try to prove yourself to him. The point of dating isn't to prove how amazing I am to the other person. The point of dating is to discover how compatible are we and would this partnership make sense? Would it work out? Would we have something meaningful together? That's the point of dating. It's not to prove your worth to him. So try to take that perspective instead of the proving yourself perspective. Number two, you're too aggressive. I'm not saying never initiate and just be passively waiting for a guy to pursue you. 
I'm aware that it's no longer the 1950s. At the same time, you have to leave some space for a man to pursue you. You just do. We can still be strong, independent women and leave a little space for a man to pursue us. Why? because that's what builds his interest and attraction in you. So you can plant some seeds, but that's it. Then leave it alone. You can't plant the seed and then do all the gardening and do all the work. So let's say you text him and say, you know, we should hang out sometime. And he says, yeah, great. I'll, I'll get back to you and let you know what works for me. But then he doesn't get back to you. Don't follow up with, okay, so what days work for you? When are you free? That's aggressive. Planting a seed, fine following up and just pursuing it and pursuing it, pursuing it when a guy isn't really giving you much back is too aggressive and too desperate. So just don't always be the one initiating the plans, initiating the text, initiating everything. Because if you do this, then a man can't invest in you because you're not giving him the space to. And if he's not investing in you, he can't come to care for you in a meaningful way. One last trap about being too aggressive is that you can fall into the trap of passive reciprocation. What this means is you text a guy and he replies and he's perfectly nice and he's perfectly friendly, but he's not super into you. So you can't let go of it because he's acting nice and he is like you know if you ask him out on a date he'll say yes and you'll go on a date and maybe you'll hook up and you'll have a nice time so you kind of feel like well does he like me does he not like me because he shows up he's not rejecting me here's the problem with passive reciprocation a guy can only like you a little bit he can like you but not like you enough to want to be in a relationship with you so if you're doing all the pursuing a guy might agree because he kind of likes you a little bit but usually in those cases the relationship doesn't work out in the end because he never liked you enough to begin with and i'm gonna give you a personal story here because it's a good one and it really illustrates this point. All right, so I met this guy. I'm going to call him James. I met him at a bar on like a Saturday afternoon. Me and my friend were day drinking, you know, as one does in your early 20s. And he was super cute. I mean, I spotted him right away at the bar and I like made my way over to him and then he struck up a conversation with me. And then me and my friend and him and his friend ended up like spending the whole afternoon together. The whole time I couldn't tell if he liked me. And I, I remember feeling like really sad for a big chunk of this day because I thought that he was into my friend because I couldn't tell if he liked me. But then towards the end of our time together he kissed me and he asked for my number and I was like oh wow I guess like he did like me this whole time I left but then we made plans to meet up again later that night so it was like a whole day all night marathon session and then we decided we were gonna go to the movies that Thursday together but I didn't hear from him so I didn't hear from him Sunday Monday Tuesday and I was like I am an independent woman. I am just gonna call him. We made plans to go to the movies. Oh, and also I friended him on Facebook and he didn't accept my friend request, but I was like, okay, maybe he just didn't see it. We made plans to go to the movies and yeah, you know, I'm just gonna call him. So I called him, it was so painfully, oh, I can't even believe I did this, wow. Like I called him, I didn't text him, I called him and I was like, hey, so like, are, are we still on for the movies tomorrow night? And he was like, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, sure. Like, I guess so. So he agreed to it. And I remember he met me at my building. I came down my apartment building, he was sitting in the lobby and he just looked miserable. It looked like it, it was like the last place in the world he wanted to be. And he was like, oh, hey. I was like, hey, uh, okay. It was so awkward. I was like, what am I even doing? But we ended up having a really nice time at dinner. And after that, we started dating. And I was like, oh, look, look at me. Look, you know, I really like made this happen. But the thing is, he liked me a little. He didn't like me that much. And it was very clear in like, in looking back at the time, it, I just felt very confused. I was like, does he like me? Does he not? He acts like he likes me. Cause like, I wasn't the one doing all the work. He was initiating hangouts with me. He was texting me first. He was asking me out and stuff like that. But it was just clear he didn't like me enough. And in the end, he ended up ghosting me and like at calling me by accident, thinking he was calling the new girl that he was hooking up with. So it was like four months, three or four months of my life in this relationship with a guy who was never in it to begin with. And had I not called him to go out on that date, had I just accepted that, okay, he didn't call me because he just doesn't like me enough, then none of that would have ever happened. But you know what? Without him, this site never would have been born because he was actually the catalyst for all of this. And actually I explained the whole reason why and everything that happened in the relationship in the opening chapter of our first book, He's Not That Complicated, which you can find at he's not that complicated.com actually. Um, so if you're gonna get the book for any reason, you should get it for that because it's a really good story. But let's move on. Number three, you have an agenda. This is the biggest area that trips women up. You can't just enjoy the relationship because you wanna push it in a certain direction. So you're dating this guy and you want him to be your boyfriend. So you're measuring all your interactions with him in terms of whether it's getting you closer to or further from that goal. So if he texts you frequently one day, you think, okay, he must be really serious about me. He, he must really like me. Uh, great, I'm getting closer. But then the next day, maybe he's a little cold with you. Maybe he brushes you off. Maybe he doesn't wanna hang out. And then you're further from your goal and you feel really sad. So you can't ever be present with this guy because all you're thinking is, 
Am I getting closer to my goal or not? You're completely focused on hitting some sort of milestone with him. And that completely takes you out of the relationship because you're not interacting with him. You're interacting with the thoughts in your head. You're interacting with the anxious, worried, insecure, paranoid thoughts that are flooding your being constantly. You can't form a meaningful connection with someone when you're coming from that place. From the guy's perspective, this just comes across as too much pressure. Guys don't want to feel pressured into commitment. They want to feel inspired to commit and it's completely possible to do that, but you have to give him the space to choose you. When you just want him to be your boyfriend because you just want that title because that will mean something to you, that will validate you in some way, that doesn't feel good to a man. He doesn't want to feel like he's just fulfilling some emotional need for you. He doesn't want to feel like he's just filling a spot that any other guy with a pulse could fill because you just want a boyfriend, you don't care who it's with. That doesn't feel good. He wants to feel chosen for who he is, for the amazing person that he is. He wants to feel like you see him for who he truly is. And if you just have an agenda, it just comes across as way too desperate and he won't want to commit to you any further. Number four, you post endlessly on social media to get a rise out of him. You are the queen of the thirst trap and the subtweet combined. You're constantly posting pictures or updating your status, showing how amazing your life is. And if this guy blows you off one night, then you make sure that you are posting pictures of yourself looking amazing and having the time of your life with the intention of just getting a rise out of him. The same is with the subtweets. When you're posting sad, sappy quotes or angry, man-hating quotes, just trying to get a rise out of him. This is just immature behavior. A mature woman is direct about how she feels. She doesn't post some sad, sappy quote because she's upset about the way her guy's treating her. She speaks to him directly and says, look, you know, I have some problems in this relationship and I wanna to talk to you about them. When you are posting to get a reaction out of him, he and everyone who follows you will know it and it's just not attractive. So just try to cut that behavior out completely. Number five, you play games. Guys know it when you're playing games and it's not attractive. The thing with playing games is that it creates the illusion that you are a confident woman who has a lot going on in her life and that is what intrigues the guy. But that's just an illusion. You can't sustain that if that's not the real you. What actually gets the guy is to genuinely be that high value woman who has a fulfilling, well-rounded life and has so much going on in her life, not pretending to be that woman. So this just reminds me of this one time I was with my guy friend and he had been, you know, had gone on a few dates with this girl and they were texting and he genuinely didn't see a text from her for a while. And then he saw it and then he responded to it and he was like, well, now I'm going to have to wait seven hours before I hear from her because he said that every time he takes a while to text her back, she like multiplies that time by three. And that's when he hears from her. And he was, he showed me their entire texting exchange. He was like, watch like what time I sent the text and what time she sent the text. And he just saw right through it. It was so pathetic to him. And he really liked this girl when they had gone on their few dates and her texting him back right away wouldn't have turned him off. What turned him off was the fact that she felt like she needed to make him wait this set amount of time before responding to him. He didn't see it as charming or alluring. He saw it as needy and desperate. Don't come from this place. I tell you guys that, yeah, you shouldn't respond to a guy's text right away, but I don't mean okay, he texted you and you're not doing anything. You're just sitting around. Okay, you're going to set a timer for three hours from now. And that's when you'll respond. I mean, fill your life up with so much that you don't notice if he texted you or if he didn't text you. Or maybe you notice a little bit, but you're not just desperately and breathlessly waiting by the phone, waiting for him to text you back. You're doing other things. You have a lot going on. You're not just putting all of your hopes and all of your dreams and all of your aspirations and all of your happiness onto this one guy and onto whether or not he texts you back. That's what I mean. Don't play hard to get, be hard to get. So those are the five biggest desperate behaviors that turn men off. Did you agree with this list? Did I miss anything? If so, please let me know in comments. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a like. This will really help me out. It'll help me grow my channel. This channel is pretty brand new and I really enjoy doing it. So please just share the love, share it with your girlfriends, your guy friends, anyone who could benefit from this advice. Also, Eric, my partner and I have an amazing newsletter where you hear from both of us. I know you only hear from me on this channel, but on the newsletter, you'll get plenty of content from him. We we give relationship advice, we share personal stories, we share our books, like the book I mentioned earlier. Um, there's so much on there, it's so good. I feel like because it's an email list, I, we both can get a little bit more personal than we would you know, on a channel or on the website. So you can sign up at anewmode.com slash subscribe. So I hope to see you on there. Follow me on Instagram at anewmode and I will see you guys in the next video.